Let's hop straight into a new match against uh, Stepanovsky. Uh, oh, and we get a chance to repeat our slightly dubious Sicilian from the last game. And uh, my opponent improves over that with two knight f3. Definitely a better move than disconnecting. Uh, are we going to see an open Sicilian with d4? Well, my opponent delays by playing knight c3. And irritatingly, this actually sidesteps some of my theory. Not that I have an awful lot of theory. Uh, let's go g6. And I hope he doesn't play d4. Okay, he's not played d4. Now, now we're back into a normal... Is this a normal? This is a normal Rosalimo with three bishop b5. Uh, does black play d6 in this position? I imagine black plays d6 here. It strikes me as slightly odd to have the knight on c3 in this position. Because white normally plays c3 and d4. So I'm slightly at a loss uh, for what I'm supposed to be playing here. Maybe e5 was a sensible move on the last go. Um, but okay, we, we've kind of transposed back into some kind of open Sicilian position after my opponent eventually plays d4. I can play knight f6, takes, takes, e5. Uh, hey, hi, that's not entirely what I wanted. What about queen a5 here? Certainly doesn't strike me as ridiculous. I was a little bit worried the queens would come off if I played knight f6, because after e5 I almost certainly have to play d takes and then queen takes d8. Have dropped a little bit behind on the clock, so you've got to keep half an eye on that as well. Please don't forget to, to let us know what you think of the show. Uh, the best thing would be to tweet directly to me, at T. Randall, on Twitter. Uh, also, if you can uh, can retweet and tell everyone about uh, about the new start time of the show, uh, which will be from Thursdays from now on, that would be absolutely fantastic. I'm hoping to see you all uh, on the new the new time slot. Uh, okay, what's going on here? My opponent can take on c6, eliminating my two bishops, but then he opens up my half open b file. I can hit b2. I still prefer that to bring the knight back to b3. Because he's left me with the bishop pair now. And I don't know how well the knight is placed there. However, on the downside, I don't know a good square for my queen. c7, for example, or b6, he'd play knight d5. So I'm going to play knight queen to a6. Obviously, there's no light squared bishop anymore, so it should be difficult for him to harass it. But he does play knight d5 anyway. Rook c8... Yeah, maybe I've underestimated his plan a little bit here. Uh, the big problem for the moment is that um, my king's still trapped in the centre of the board. And it's a little bit difficult for me to castle. Bishop g5 is an excellent move, and I'm getting outplayed here, if I'm being brutally honest. Uh, I have to take this off with the bishop anyway, and he gets this half-open file. Now, h6. I want to put the question to that bishop. Oh, I just really need to be able to move castle's kingside. Maybe rook c7 holds things together and buys me the tempo I need to go castles. If queen e2, I have to swap queens, but then the pawn on d5 drops, so he won't do that. Maybe, maybe I've been harsh on my position. Maybe it's still okay. Times have levelled up a little bit. I'm even slightly up. Minute 12 against a minute 04. Um, my opponent did at least get c3 in a couple of moves ago. That, the idea of that is to blunt my bishop on this long diagonal. In particular, it's no longer picking up the pawn on b2. But my opponent's had a long think here. I guess the point is he just can't stop me from castling. And that's not what he wanted. Let's see what he's going to do here. But my suspicion is that he's going to regret, regret spending as much time uh, as he has on this move. I hope, really hope he's not disconnected, because he's thought for maybe a minute in this position. He's down to 26 seconds, 25. Uh, what What is going on? Well, it looks like he just spent a minute and 10 seconds finding bishop e3. And it's not a bad move. 
It's not the worst move ever. It's not the best move ever. But surely 16.2 seconds isn't enough when uh, the position is still just very level here. Queen c4 makes a lot of sense here. Or do I want to go b6 first? Uh, let's go b6 first, keep everything under control, and then queen c4 to hit this pawn. Uh, he's going to go rook across here, maybe queen a4, we'll just do a little bit of annoying. Rook to c8, but um, I'm really looking for some kind of nice way to finish this off, but uh, maybe queen e4. Take this off. It's all a bit technical right now, but um, knight coming into c4 definitely gives me a nice advantage. Uh, okay, let's take that off and play bishop f6. Uh, I can start pushing a little bit with b5, perhaps. Actually, my opponent's going to get uh, knight d4 in and be completely okay. I really need to move a little bit faster. Uh, I have picked up a pawn at least, which is good. And now, just a pawn up and an ending, but uh, probably going to end with my opponent losing this on time. And this should be pretty much it, now that I've got the 7th rank. Uh, let's double over here, and rook takes a2. Ooh, let's take this one first, and then over here. And yeah, I do win on time, but uh, you can see from the final position I just have an extra couple of pawns. My rooks are in excellent position. Uh, I just move my rook back and threaten mate. Should be a win. But probably not the most exciting game ever there. So let's see what we can do to re-establish our hacking uh, credentials. With a king's gambit. And a very regular favourite. My opponent doesn't take the pawn. Well, boo. Uh, don't know how bad the move d4 is here. My suspicion is it's fairly bad. But uh, we're going to play it anyway. And we have successfully gambited a pawn. Go us. Uh, do we have any compensation for the pawn? Mm, maybe? I don't know. Let's not worry too much about that. I will probably be regretting my opening choice. Uh, a few moves down the road. But I was really hoping he couldn't play C4. But he blatantly can. Okay, I'm regretting my opening choice, guys. It is official. Uh, my opening choice is pants. It is bad. And I, I have... I think this is one of the positions where you say that uh, black has the extra pawn and all of the compensation. So, for those of you who don't know, that means my position is just terrible. But uh, don't worry, we will bravely soldier on. Uh, at least for the time being. Uh, you know, it's not mate. Oh, he says that, but is he threatening d3, pawn takes bishop there, mate? Yeah, I really shouldn't have said that's not mate. Okay, well, you can have a second pawn if you like. I just can't allow d3 with bishop f2 being mate. Uh, okay, he has the second pawn. He says thank you very much, Tom. Uh, assuming he knows it's me. Um, if I go rook b1, he's going to say thank you for another pawn. Uh, I am really not certain where my counterplay is coming from here. Knight g5 looks aggressive, but isn't. Um, but it might be the best move out of a pretty bad bunch. Let's go king f1. Because it's no better or worse than other moves. Oh dear. Uh, this game is perhaps more interesting than the last one, but for all the wrong reasons. Um, it'd be nice to create a threat at some point in this game. At the very least, I'll go rook b1 and hit his queen at some point. If he takes, bishop takes, maybe I'll recapture with the king. Okay, that move is slightly unexpected. Uh, rook b1, queen d4 is my opponent's idea. But, hey-ho. 
I can go Queen E1 and I don't lose straight away, I don't think. Uh, the idea is Queen D4 threatens mate on F2 and prevents me from taking on G4. But if he takes the pawn on A2, I actually still can't take it. Because the bishop on D2 is on pre. So he has a couple of options. But Queen takes A2, I'm going to play Rook takes B7, I think. Now, even though my position is still completely lost, it feels bet it feels like a, uh, a better lost position than it was earlier. Uh, that might not sound like the biggest deal, and that's probably because it isn't. But I feel a lot more optimistic about my chances than I did earlier on. If only this Rook on H1 could get in the game somehow. Maybe our opponent will obligingly castle and I can go H5, H6 and get an attack that way. But if my opponent doesn't castle, then I have E6 in some positions. And that there is a small matter of the pawn on b7 still being on pre if this knight moves then the knight comes into f5 okay bishop b6 is very sensible just defending against some of those threats but let's go e6 and if f6 knight f7 we are making a comeback here guys uh of some sorts if pawn takes we play knight takes and then his queen has to go somewhere and then we vaguely do something and then something uh, but I'm up on the clock here. 53 seconds against 42. Uh, how are we doing time? We're probably going to have one more mini-match um, after this uh, before John steps in with his break. Queen f6. Rook b6 doesn't really do very much here. f5 doesn't really do very much. Bishop c3. Oh, I'm so close to having something here. f5 knight takes. Ooh, f5. f5 is a move. Let's play it. The idea is to go bishop g5 and carry on my counterattack. Uh, play it. Queen goes back to f7, I suspect. Now he's threatening to take this pawn off. Can I go knight c5 and rook takes? No, that's rubbish. Uh, I think my attack is dwindling. Um, um, let's just go back and not lose immediately, but I'm down to 16 seconds against 32. Absolutely need to... Okay, I just need to get all of my pieces in the game. Uh, queen c3, and then king g2 at some moment. Oh, wow, my opponent's done something crazy, but good. Um, probably going to get mated in a second here, but uh, I'm getting mated here. Uh, it's such a nice finish. Let's let my opponent mate me. Wow, that was a, a nice hack in the end by my opponent. Queen sac well, I can't really call it a sacrifice, he just took too much material. But, uh, yeah, very nice game for my opponent there. I just didn't quite manage to recover from my awful early game. Uh, but let's see if we can take this series 2-1 as well. I'm going to say good game to my opponent, because he played that last one very well. And in service Sicilian, we're going to try a French this time. I wonder if my opponent can play an exchange. No, sadly not. He doesn't play the worst opening in chess, but uh, instead opts for something that looks almost uh, conventional. So actually, this is an opening that I prepared for a little bit yesterday. Um, I was playing uh, playing in the, in the British team league, the 4NCL, yesterday, and I played against a, um, a French grandmaster called Sebastian Mays. And uh, I spent all of my time before the game preparing for this line, the Alakai and Chateau attack in the in the French defence. And then my opponent went and played one knight f3. Uh, ironically, I was still preparing after the game had started in my room. I wasn't aware my opponent had played knight f3. And uh, so I was ten minutes late to the game. Um, which slightly came back to bite me as I, a couple of times in the time scramble, played a move with one second left with the 30 second increment. But... Uh, Anyway, I should probably be concentrating on this game and not on a different game that, I, uh, that I've already lost. So, um, I should probably play knight b6 and bishop d7 and castle queenside. That's the general idea of this knight c6 setup. Despite the fact that I've vaguely prepared this line, I have managed to go behind my opponent on the clock. But that's fine. We have uh, played this just about okay. Uh, maybe I should have gone f6 on the last go, but honestly, um, it's too difficult for me to work out these kind of fine details. 
Uh, okay, h5 is slightly annoying, forces my pawn to g5. It's kind of left a lot of weaknesses in the position. But if I can manage to go bishop d7 and castle, then overall I should be very comfortable. Uh, I can maybe play f6 a little bit later, knight a5 to c4. Plenty of, uh, of ideas here. Uh, so just going to try and blitz out a few moves so that... Um, so that I can move a little bit more slowly later on. F5 is a key move here. Takes, queen takes. Rookie one, e5 doesn't work. Uh, can I play f5? Takes, queen takes. Maybe, just maybe. F5 takes, queen takes, rookie one. e5, pawn takes, bishop takes. Uh, what about knight e5? Okay, let's play f5, pawn takes, queen takes, rook e1, rook f8. Knight e5, maybe I can take, take and play queen f4. Uh, actually, I think the game here is being played at... I think this is a reasonably standard game. Uh, given given the standards that we, we normally produce, or at least on on the basis of... Uh, okay, I thought his the wrong rook went to e1 there, and I'll tell you why. If the rook on a1 had gone to e1, he'd now be able to play knight e5, because his rook on f1 would be would still be covering f2. But now the knight on f3 is pinned to the pawn on f2, and he's under a little bit of pressure here. A good move might be knight to e2, to cut out any ideas of me playing queen f4. But I'm just trying to buy some time in order to play e5 here. Um... I have kind of a positional threat of queen g7, followed by e5. So one idea here is knight e2, queen g7, queen g3. And that covers e5 enough times and keeps the pawn on d4 covered. But uh, my opponent is having a long think here, and rightly so. But if he doesn't move soon, then he is going to leave himself with absolutely no time for the critical middle game that is coming up. What am I going to play against knight e2? I have no idea. Suddenly I'm a minute up on the clock. My opponent goes down to 34 seconds. Can I play knight takes d4 here? Well, I can play g4 as well here. The idea... No, okay, that's rubbish. The idea is queen takes rook g8, but he has bishop g6. Bishop e8 is an interesting move. What I, why can't I take this pawn? Knight takes pawn, knight takes pawn, queen takes. I can take this pawn. I, I don't see why I can't take it. Okay, he's gone knight e5. His idea is positional compensation. Uh, I don't care about positional compensation. If you've given up a pawn, are you mating me? No. Uh, I really should be careful about saying that, given he mated me in the last game. But uh, He is throwing everything, including the kitchen sink, at me right now. Um, and he's starting to create mating threats, which is rude. Uh, let's go queen f4. I am running scared and I am happy to swap the queens off because he had ideas of knight moves, discovered attacks on, um, on what's his name? Uh, c7. Bishop goes to g6. Uh, I don't really understand his plan now. I think I can take and take. And that should be three extra pawns? Ah, he's going to win an exchange. Clever. Yeah, so knight g6. Uh, damn, I'm dropping the e6 pawn as well. This game is falling apart in front of your eyes here. Uh, oh no. Knight goes back. Knight in. Bishop f5. King d8, maybe? Oh no. I completely overlooked that move. Bishop f5 is just going to win. Or that move. Can I somehow create enough confusion to force my opponent to lose this on time? I don't think so. Ooh, I've got past pawns, maybe. Past pawns are my only hope. What? I'm confused. This is a draw. Draw. Yeah! Well, that was odd. Why did he let me take that? Why, oh why, oh why? Tell you what that means. Uh, 
we're gonna we're gonna give this guy one more game. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna call it a best of four since that finished one and a half all. Um, and then John is gonna step in after this game. Uh, right. Well, F four really didn't work in that last game. So let's play something a little bit more standard. Let's play a Royal Pez and see if we can go for something aggressive in a minute. If we should be seven, we're gonna try this D four line. Uh, a favourite of mine, especially in Blitz. Just takes my opponents out of their theory a lot of the time and uh, generally gets me okay positions. But so far, my opponent seems to be playing according to theory. He's played all of the best moves. Knight f5, and now don't go d5. If he goes d5, then my opponent knows exactly what he's doing and I have no advantage. But hey, hey. I can play queen g4 here, I think. And now the best move is g6. And I take this off. Do I take on there first? Probably not. Oh, I just did. There we go. If queen takes, then bishop takes c6 and queen g3. I think this is the point. And we have an opposite colour bishop position. But with Queen still on the board, that should favour the side that's attacking. And because I'm me, I'm hoping to attack. So what I want to do is go Bishop G5, Bishop F6, Queen H6, Queen G7, mate. However, my opponent is no patser and is not going to allow me to do that. So, boo. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to blindly give up a pawn for no good reason. And hope that we can get an attack a little bit later. Uh... Not at my absolute most confident, though, regarding this game. Um, rook there was very sensible. Let's go rookie one, maybe. Uh, problem is that now when he takes on c2, knight d3 is maybe a thing. But, okay, so he does take it off. Bishop g5, gain a bit of time against the queen. Uh, queen goes back. Queen h4, because it looks vaguely aggressive. My general plan here is to go bishop f6, uh, rook e3, queen takes h7, rook h3, rook h8, mate. There were about 20 flaws in that. Uh, the most notable being that queen h6 blocks the mating idea. But we're not going to let things like details uh, get in the way of... Uh, of a potentially nice tactic. Uh, let's put the rook on e3. Start to line this all up. Might choose to bring this rook over for additional support. Other ideas here are like rook h3, h5, g4. But I probably want the bishop on f6 or the rook on e1 before starting any of that nonsense. Okay, my opponent goes bishop f5. Why can't I go g4? Uh, let's find out why I can't go g4 by playing g4. Bishop goes back to e6, rook h3. Ah, I can't go rook h3 because of... Uh, because of... Um, why can't I go there? Uh, I don't know, this is too complicated for me, guys. Let me bring another rook in while I gather my thoughts. Um... Yeah, because of h5 and g takes, bishop takes h3. Although even that wasn't that clear. But now look how strong the bishop on g5 is. Not only do I have all of these ideas of giving checkmate, but it covers the key square uh, d8, so he can't put a rook there. Do I just recapture a pawn here? With pawn takes f6, on passant? Yeah, I think so. Now, surely my opponent's position is about to fall apart. I mean, I have no idea how. Uh, both players have a minute left here. Oh, I want to go bishop h6, bishop g7, queen takes h7, rook h3, rook h8, mate. We might have uh, been playing this idea for a while, uh, for those of you who are paying attention. But I expect my opponent is going to notice and play h5. But then after h5, I play pawn takes, pawn takes, rook g3. And that must be pretty dangerous. But what else is he doing? He's gone bishop d5, queen h7. King h7, rook h3, king h8. I believe this is a mating queen sacrifice, guys. 
Well, my opponent hasn't taken my queen yet. That, that I am putting down as a good sign. My opponent says, well played. And I'm saying, thank you, good games. I think he, think he knows I've spotted this rook h3 through h8. And we do end part one on a high note with a queen sacrifice. That's absolutely... Uh, that's not something we managed to get done all that often on Hack Attack. But uh, yeah, so, uh, so follow that, John. Uh, John will be stepping in right now uh, to uh, entertain you with some more of John's Blunderful Games. I'm going to step away, uh, get a little drink, and uh, I'll be back with part two of the show in a few minutes' time. Don't go anywhere.